Welcome to my CCNA training series, my name is Trevor. The concept for this video is going to answer the question, what is the OSI model? So starting in the late 1970s, the International Organization for Standardization began the first major attempt to create a vendor-neutral networking model. Their goal was to solve for the vendor proprietary protocols that existed on the market, and they wanted to create a standard that allowed all computers in the world to freely communicate with each other. So the name of the model that the International Organization for Standardization created was called the OSI model, or the Open System Interconnection Networking Model. So at this point it's important for you to know that the OSI model simply documents the complexities in networking by classifying and breaking it down into layers. This is called a layered architecture. This layered approach also makes it easier for learning and troubleshooting. Since layers exist, it's possible to test errors and issues one at a time, layer by layer, until the issue is isolated and identified. Again, the OSI model does not impose or force any rules on any network device vendor. It simply documents a set standardized way of how the device should function so that inner vendor operability can exist. So for the CCNA exam, not only is it important for you to know why we have the OSI model, it's also extremely important that you know exactly what happens at each layer in the OSI model and how it functions. So the OSI model is a seven layered network model. At the top you have the application layer, working your way down, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. An easy way to remember this is the mnemonic that I was taught by my instructors, all people seem to need data processing. And what this is, is if you look at the first letter, it correlates to the first letter in the actual layer, so it can help you remember. A is all, and that translates to application, and so on all the way down until you get to physical and processing. Next I'm going to go into each layer real quick and give you a brief overview of what happens in it. I will be making more dedicated videos, really taking a deep dive in each layer here at a later date, so keep an eye out for those. So layer one is the physical layer. This is where cabling and electricity come into play. The devices that exist on the physical layer are going to be hubs or repeaters. Remember, if the device isn't turned on, that's a layer one physical issue. The PDU or protocol data unit for layer one is bits. This is where binary happens. It's ones and zeros. It's either on or off. The next layer is one of my personal favorites and it's layer two, data link. This is where we have MAC addresses. And MAC addresses are the physical addresses associated to devices that connect to the internet. We also have protocols such as reverse ARP, the devices that exist on layer 2 would be switches, and the protocol data unit for layer 2 is frames. Next we have the network layer. This is my true personal favorite. At this layer we have IP addresses and protocols such as ARP and ICMP. The devices that exist on layer 3 would be routers or firewalls or load balancers, and the protocol data unit for the network layer are packets. Next at layer 4 is the transport layer. This is where we have two options, you're either TCP or UDP. We'll go in depth in these two different protocols in a later video. The protocol data units that exist at the transport layer are either segments if you're TCP traffic or datagrams if you're UDP traffic. The next layer that we have is the session layer. At layer 5 this is primarily concerned with the dialogue control among devices. This is not a heavily tested layer on the CCNA certification. The protocol data unit at layer 5 is just data. Layer 6 is the presentation layer. This handles the structure and negotiation of data transfers to the application layer. This is not a heavily tested layer on the CCNA certification concepts. Items that exist at the presentation layer are JPEGs, MP4s, and GIFs, for example. The protocol data unit is simply referred to as data at this layer as well. And layer 7 of the OSI model is referred to as the application layer. This is where external application protocols exist such as HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, and Telnet. What is heavily tested about this layer are going to be the protocol numbers that you need to remember and we will talk about it at a later time. The protocol data unit at this layer is also referred to as data. Well I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope that you now have a better understanding of what the OSI model is and what it's composed of. Please leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.